Hey everyone, today we'll be making one of these bad boys. It's a DNA 75C in the new ABM2 enclosure with the squonk lid. Nice beveled cut on the squonk hole. You can do either a a single 18650 or in this case I went uh, a 2700 so stick around and we're gonna build this thing So the first thing I'll do, um, I prefer the external mount method. Uh, sure, you see the the screws uh, on the front face there, but I got these uh, nice flathead um, screws. So I'm gonna uh, countersink the the holes so they they end up flat. Um, in my opinion, easier to install and remove the board if uh, you need to do repairs. So I'm going to drill the front here. Um, and to make sure I get those holes to line up perfect, uh, I 3D print a little uh, drill template. Um, so if you see it fits inside the uh, buttons and then the holes, uh, I'm going to use a 16th drill bit through these holes and they'll, they'll line up perfectly. Um, if you buy the kit, want the external mount, don't want me to drill or plan to drill the mounting holes yourself, you'll get one of these. It won't have um, the metal parts here. Um, you can use them a few times, just the 3D printed, but if you use them a bunch of times, the, the holes tend to get bigger. So what I did for mine, which I plan to reuse, I had the little rivets and I took the center pin out of them and I had to, to cut them, but I uh, super glued them in there and I can use this uh, a lot more times before it wears out the uh, the hole that guides the the drill bit so I'll drill that off camera uh, be right back so that's done if you can see the countersink there these will end up nice and flat with the face. I also drilled the uh, 510. I have a 3D printed drill template uh, for that as well. Just sits on, pilot hole goes through the hole there. Uh, because this enclosure comes both with the squonk lid and the regular lid, squonk hole over on this side and there's another hole uh, if you're doing a non-squonk, have your 510 over on this side. We'll set that aside for now. Uh, it's Oh, and if you order this, I drill the 510 uh, for you. So if you order the squonk, it defaults onto this side because of the sled. Uh, if you order the non-squonk, it defaults to the other side because the, the battery tray is over onto the right there. Now for the sled, because we're going uh, with a 2700 battery in here, um, we're using the ground plane. We're going to braze the top contact onto there. Uh, but if you grab the 18650 model, um, I don't bother with the, the ground plane. There's plenty of room on each side on the top and bottom so it uses the um, the other battery clips that slide onto the sled here and you can solder your positive and negative that way uh, but with the restricted or the extra space the 2700 takes we're using this sled with the uh, ground plane 
So a bit of prep is needed on the contacts um, here. First I'll line up my ground plane with the hole, sit the contact halfway between the channel for the battery. I'll mark it on each side. So when we solder that on there, I'll know how to position it. And the bottom contact glues in to the sled here. Uh, if you notice, there's a, some room, little channel down here. I'm going to solder behind the contact, and then the wire is going to pop out of that uh, little recess there. Uh, so I'll mark, well, maybe I don't need to, but I'll mark this as well, where that where that hole is. And I'll solder I'm using some 18 gauge wire. It meets the requirements from the um, data sheet for the DNA 75 on the battery side. Um, I'll use 16 on the uh, 510 side. Um, I'd normally include both 18 and 16 in the kit. So if you want to use 16 on the batteries, you can. Looks good. You can use CA glue, um, but for metal to plastic, I'm going to go epoxy, uh, but I'll do that after. So now this, so I'll tin the whole backside of this contact. <clears throat> It'll take several passes. You need to leave the iron on there uh, for a few seconds to get a lot of heat because it's um, like plated.
try and clean up the extra flux with some acetone. I'm grabbing an extra piece of paper towel here because I want to be able to hold it but that's going to get really hot um, so what I'll do I'll go right on the edge I'll load up my iron and I'll come right on the edge here and it'll m melt the solder that's behind here and fuse it onto the board I'll do the top and bottom first then I'll come along and run the tip of the iron uh, against the sides here again to, to melt what's under there and get that fused onto the little copper ground plane here. Probably a better idea. So that's done. You can tin the whole thing if you want to. Uh, in fact, that's what I had done on the 3D printed one. Uh, I'm going to add another blob.
right on the edge here because this is where we'll run a wire to connect to the ground on the board. Okay, I'll glue that contact in. So I'll let that harden. That's it for the sled for now. We'll start uh, prepping the board. So as always, I'll load these pads with a bit more solder, except for the battery negative because we won't be using that one. I'll pre-solder the positive out for the 510. Get my screen on there. Get my board mount.
<clears throat> in fact, before I commit to jam the board in there, uh, you can't with the 250 because they need the batteries attached for the screen to light up. But with the 75s, I like to just do a little sanity check, make sure the screen works. If you have trouble with these uh, tiny little nuts, uh, one trick, well, I usually put it on the tip of my finger, uh, but if you have problems getting it to stick, wipe a bit of the gummy um, flux onto the tip of your finger. It's a great fit. Never tug too hard on uh, the wire that's onto the pad. I've seen a lot of pics of people ripping the pads off the board, so be careful. So the length for the positive 510 wire should be good.
length for the battery positive. I should have measured and cut that before screwing the 510 in because I'm not going to be able to get in there and bear that so I'll need to pop the uh, the sled out. I'll tin the positive terminal on here, uh, but I'm going to try and solder the wire with everything in place to get as much of a natural bend as possible. And I'll tin both sides because I'm not sure if I'm going to come at it from the front or the back yet. I think from the back there actually.
that works. The battery positive down here. And the last thing, the ground from the top plate onto the board. Um, we could use a small piece of wire, uh, but what I did on the three, 3D printed enclosure and what we do with the, uh, the IPWM, the sled mount board, is... Uh, use a little piece of solder wick and it's way easier to bend in sh short runs like that now I'll go wire I maybe should have put my solder point much closer to the battery contact there. <clears throat> now I didn't tin it too much uh, because what is normally super flexible wire uh, as you tin and the solder wicks in to the wire uh, a good portion of it close to the tin part isn't uh, doesn't bend anymore That looks good.
that should be it. Green looks good. I don't have the magnets on the lid. Uh, in fact, let's do that. The magnets in the enclosure are the same four millimeter by three millimeters deep. Uh, the lid, they're six by two instead of six by three. Uh, put them in a stack, mark the opposite ends and then you feed from the unmarked side I stopped using epoxy on the magnets I've been going uh, CA glue <clears throat> and what I do is lay down a piece of tape Put a few drops down, ready my non-magnetic item, and then something magnetic. And again, you feed from the unmarked side, and that always goes in. You don't need a ton of it on there. I check after each one to make sure I'm on the right side. And last one, mark side down. You're, you get a bit of excess, you can get a Q-tip and some acetone. The acetone won't harm the anodized finish. Uh, if you have a powder coat enclosure, though, you can still do it, but uh, be a little bit more careful because it will slowly eat away at the uh, powder coat. That mark is down.
looks good. Well, that works nice. So, uh, DNA 75, squonk, single 2700 battery in the new ABM2 enclosure with the squonk lid. Once again, thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see you next time.